Hey, welcome back. Hey, this is part two of the perfect sight tape. The last video was the measurements, the more technical aspects. Um, it's for, it was for the nerds, right? But if you stuck with us to this point, we're gonna have a little bit of fun now. We're gonna get to shoot. We're at the peak of what we wanted to do for the perfect sight tape. I printed out my sight tape. I already walked y'all through that process. Um, I spared y'all on some of the arts and crafts, so I cut it out. I got it here. I'm getting ready to place it onto my site. We're gonna verify it. Remember, the Archer's Advantage system, what it does is, it's gonna give you a printout, but there's a few different speeds on there. And where it really shines is, is the in-between ranges, the 65, the 66, the 73. Those are a lot more accurate than if you were to just take the one out of the stock pack like say for instance the ones that come with the Montana Black Gold or your Spot Hog, 10 times out of 10, if you put the correct information into Archer's Advantage, you're gonna get a much better sight tape that's a lot more accurate, okay? So stick with me, let's get to shooting. So I'm gonna try to get this 50 mark lined up here as perfectly as possible. So it looks good. And you see this red dial here? If I didn't line this up perfectly, what I can do is, there's just a, um, there's just a little screw on the backside that I can really, I can fine tune or micro adjust to get that red indicator perfectly on the 50 mark. Cause my bottom pin is sided in the 50. So this tape needs to be at 50 here on the red indicator. And then as I scroll down, that fit that bottom pin is gonna be my floater okay hey some of y'all are really really great at following instructions right so you remember in part one in part one for the perfect sight tape I told you all use calculated speed don't use the chronograph speed I'm gonna show you an example of what happens if you use the chronograph speed um, I guarantee when I set this up it's gonna say like 275 to 280 when I shoot it through my chronograph the sight tape on here for my calculated speed says 266. So I would be chasing my tail around this range, trying to figure out if it's my shooting form, all of those various, all those factors. I will be trying to figure out if it's me or if it's my equipment. And then what do we normally do? We ended up, we end up downing ourselves instead of realizing we made a sell, we made a mistake setting up our equipment. So remember calculated speed this is 266 and then we're going to show you um, what the speed is that I'm getting through my chronograph <laughs> 280 that says 280 which I believe is true but for whatever reason if there's any flaw in Archer's advantage my sight tape says 266, 266 feet per second versus that. That's a big difference. So you're gonna be out here and every arrow that you shoot is gonna be high. And you're gonna be going through sight tape after sight tape, blaming Archer's Advantage when they tell you in the system that the preferred method to figure out what your speed is, is to go ahead and shoot a group at 20 yards or 30, and then shoot another one with the same pin that you used to shoot at 20 or 30, dial down to 80, or whatever your furthest distance is that you're comfortable with shooting a tight group and then measure the distance that you had to dial from shooting that first group with your 20 or 30 all the way down to using that same pin at 80. You put that measurement into Archer's Advantage and that's where you get your speed from. It's gonna give you a calculation. So what it calculated for me was 266. So now, hopefully, if you don't trust me, you trust the chronograph, Let's move back, let's verify this sight tape. I might have to switch to a slightly faster sight tape or maybe a slightly slower one, but on that printout, it gives you all those different options right there, okay? So let's go. I have to give a shout out to Montana Black Goat. I was on a pig hunt on Friday. The strap that I used to hang my bow up didn't work out too well, and it jacked up my um, bow sight, okay? That bow sight was all busted up, all banged up. I mailed the site off to Black Gold Saturday. 
They got it back to me on Tuesday. Mind you, I'm in Hawaii. They didn't charge me a thing, unconditional warranty. I got on, I sent them a note. They probably couldn't really read my uh, chicken scratch. They called me and was like, hey, what, what is exactly wrong with it? They fixed everything perfectly, good as new, unconditional warranty. So shout out to Montana Black Goat. That's why I believe in buy once, cry once. It's an expensive site, but guess what? If I would have bought a lesser site, they probably don't have the same warranty or it won't stand up as well. So the customer service, um, the unconditional warranty, and then just the quality of the product is why I feel good about my purchase. I don't have any buyer's remorse but going with that Montana Black Goat. Hey, you can take that for what it's worth. I'm at 300, you know, we're at 308 subscribers. Clearly we ain't sponsored by Montana Black Goat, but that's just my honest opinion. From my experience with their customer service and their product. Hey, Archer's Advantage, I'm trusting you. You don't have to be perfect, but you gotta at least be in the ballpark. I can't break no arrow off of this one now. So this is 76 yards. I'm dialing the 76. 75, 76. Archer's Advantage, please don't break my arrow. It ain't, see, it's not even the money that you put into it necessarily. It's more of the, all the time that you take to knock tune and all that good stuff, fletching. 76 yards. All right, and then hit metal. Let's see, where we at? Hey, bro, that's pretty good. We'll shoot four down there. Y'all don't forget to breathe when you shoot. We dog. Oh yeah, we hitting the tape every time. Hey, make sure you relax too, right? Keep your core, try not to let your hips um, get out of line. Try to keep your good shooting form. Hey, did you see the end of the arrow? It still has some of the plastic from the uh, Kapolei Bushwhackers targets. You know, they fill them with that plastic. And when it gets hot, which is always hot in Kapolei, when that arrow goes through that bag or that 3D target, when you pull it out, a lot of that plastic sticks to your uh, arrows. Which probably adds a little bit of weight. And uh, maybe 76 yards, it might affect it a little bit. Who knows, let's go see what we did. Lucky we live Hawaii. Got mountains in the background. Got a full, look, I have a small yard at my house, right? But this is my yard. Like I get to come out here, it's a public archery range. Get up super early. Not many people want to get up early, especially on a Monday. It's already hard enough for people to wake up on a Monday. This is, why, this is how I get to live. This is why I'm the privileged bow hunter. It really don't get any better than this. I'm from Michigan where it's gloomy, it might be sunny for five minutes and then it starts raining. Then you might get stuck in a thunderstorm. Your football game used to get canceled because of the lightning come out of nowhere. And now I get to live in Hawaii, putting arrows down range, hunting boar, deer, goat. So this is a group, right? So you let me know if you're happy with you, you let me know if you'd be happy with that group. Um, I shot one arrow before today. That arrow was literally just me showing y'all the difference between a chronograph and the um, calculated speed. And there we go. So we'll probably shoot a couple more, 
distances just to verify this was 76 yards a random a random range right i don't know if that has something to do with the olympic uh, olympic archery world and why they have it set up like this but i'm probably going to take maybe 10 steps 10 steps in should take me to around 66 yards we're going to shoot this test again then we're probably going to do it at 56 yards and then we we might drop a couple dimes for y'all out of the sky at 100 yards and then call it good Hey guys, so the last one was 76.6 yards, 76 yards, somewhere in there, right? Pretty good group, tight group. Um, I think most people will take that. So what we're gonna do is just take a few steps, um, some big, some short, and then we're gonna get to another random range because that's, what's, that's where this sight tape should shine, right? If all goes well, I should be able to pull up here because, you know, simulating that there's an animal here, range it, that's weird, it got me to a 65 yard. I don't want it to be so perfect. Let's see. Boom, the animal's at 63 yards. Out there feeding. 63 yards, relax. Has no clue that I'm here. I'm excited for the, hey, you should never shoot an animal at 63 yards comment. So about to 63, see how it goes. Because on the, a lot of those stock sites, that 76 yard one might have been perfect. But then you come back and shoot 63 or another range, and then it's all jacked up. Not bad. You want your sight tape to be able to out. You want your sight tape to be able to out uh, perform you. Who wants to have the buck of their lifetime standing in front of them and you can't remember if you need to cheat up a couple yards on your sight tape or cheat down? Why would you why would you live like that? Archer's advantage is twelve dollars. So let's go check out the group. When it's crunch time, like I said, you don't want to have to rely on your memory. We talked about this. Um, I wanna say it was the archery setup or the setup self-filming um, and saddle safety video. We talked about creating habits so you don't have to rely on your memory. Same thing with your sight tape. You don't have to, you don't wanna be having that buck fever that everybody talks about and then trying to remember where to put your sight pin. So this is what, 63 yards? Once again, I mean, that's a, that's really what you want out of your sight tape. You know, I can shoot a couple more to verify. Who knows if these two were the right ones, but if so, that's perfectly dead center. Um, or who knows if I pull a couple of these, who knows? But regardless, this just could be my, this could be just, approaching the limits on my shooting skills. You know, 63 yards, I take it. It was a little bit tighter group. Well, it's around the same size group as it was at 76 yards. Okay, so maybe we'll drop a few bombs for y'all at 100. 
and then we're going to work because we got to pay for these arrows and stuff, right? All right, so we're going to drop a few hundred yard bombs out here. Uh, we're going to see how we looking out here at 100. Um, but there's been something else on my mind too. If I could get slightly preachy for a little bit, my heart goes out to everybody across the mainland right now who's been without power, who's been without supplies, all that good stuff. Um, I really, really feel for you. Um, what I want to encourage everybody to do is to take this and to prepare it as best as possible. I know everybody has different financial situations and a lot of people are just living paycheck to paycheck and can't really afford to put things away for a rainy day. But if you have any room in your budget at all, please, please put some stuff away, right? We've seen that there's gonna be natural, natural disaster after natural disaster and the government's gonna fail you every single time, right? They failed at Hurricane Katrina. They failed over at Puerto Rico. They're gonna fail at the next natural disaster just like um, this time. We're always gonna be upset um, about the level of aid, the timeliness of the aid, and the lack of power, the lack of supplies, and the, the lack of um, organization that happens for these disaster response teams. You need to be prepared so you're not perplexed, right? You wanna be prepared and not surprised. Make sure that you got some of the things that you need. This is the one, this is one of the ways that we prepare. Um, you never know if something happens on the island, we wanna have as many skills as possible to be able to feed our family. Because I know my kids and my wife, they still need to eat even if the commissary is closed, even if the grocery store is closed. So you may never want to hunt. You may never want to gut or skin an animal, but you want to prepare those skills um, just in case you need to use them one of these days. I don't want to go to work. However, I do it because it's a necessity. So hunting doesn't have to be a hobby of yours or a passion like it is for me, but just be prepared so you're not perplexed, okay? Let's go. 100 yards, we're gonna really put the sight tape to the test and we're gonna put me to the test this is what we call dropping dimes. We Magic Johnson, John Stockton, the young boy LaMelo Ball. Let's see what we got. Uh, <laughs> I still had the sight tape at 60. We got to move it on down to 100. All right. 100. I did not hit the cardboard on that one. Take two. See, this one really exposed you. You got to Keep the bow up on your follow through. <whistles> Let's see what the progress is. Chris. I'm passing like DeAndre Jordan right now. They're saying <laughs> I need to be passing like Kyrie or something. It looked like it was online. All right, let's see what we're working with. Uh, 
my that kind of felt like the white Howard's free throw percentage what uh what did the dude from tiger king say i'm never gonna financially recover from this <laughs> <laughs> Made me feel like the younger days when you know you see a long stretch of grass and you'll go hit you a couple flips the way my back is i got physical therapy right after this there's no way that's happening for you so 80 90 100 Oh, actually, hey, I take, hey, cut everything out I just said, Chris. I'm, I might be, I might be LaMelo Ball, Matthew Johnson. This was a flyer. This was my DeAndre Jordan shot. But the rest of them, this is a decent group for 100 yards, right? I could fit my hands over it with plenty of room to spare. It was just a little bit to the right. I couldn't hit a cardboard from back there because it's been rained on all night. But that's not bad. We are just going to hide this arrow. You know what I'm saying? And just, you know, I shot three arrows. We good. <laughs> We're good. Hey guys, I just want to humbly submit that I wouldn't shoot an animal at 100 yards unless it was a follow-up shot. So you can still comment and say in the, in the comments that you shouldn't shoot at 100 yards at an animal, but I just put that disclaimer out there. So if you put that in the comments, you didn't watch to the end. Not bad. Okay, it's gonna help you on those in-between ranges. You can use the stock side tapes that come with. Um, you'll be adequate. You're just gonna have to think a little bit more because it's not gonna be perfect at every range. All right, so take this, use it. If I helped you, if you enjoyed this, like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell your buddy, tell your friend. If you can't spell it, it's P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E-D. This is fun to me, right? So this isn't work to me. For somebody else, this might be too, this might be too tedious, it might be too much work. Um, you might just wanna go with the stock sight tape. But if you love perfecting the small details, being brilliant on the basics, this is for you. If good enough isn't enough for you, or good enough for government work ain't good enough for you, then go ahead and uh, subscribe to the Privileged Bowhunter channel. Like, share, comment, subscribe. If this is your fifth time watching the video, third to fifth time watching the video, and you still ain't smashed that subscribe button, go ahead and do us a favor. Subscribe, please. Peace.